The fact that I am a big fan of Automata is no secret to anyone. In fact, at this point, it's probably weirder if you didn't know that. But. Anyway, the time has finally come to talk about none other than Tubi herself. Some of the reasons as to why this video took so long to make was I was feeling burnt out talking about the game and also because I was struggling a lot with my phrasing. And to be completely honest, I still can't perfectly nail it down really. But now that it's been more than two years since the game's release, I feel a lot more comfortable approaching this subject, and this has been a video that I've been wanting to make, regardless, and a lot of people have been asking for it for a very long time. So I am encouraging you to head into this together with me. I am putting a huge disclaimer here, saying that I am not criticizing either Yui Ishikawa or Kira Buckland's respective performances of the character. A lot goes into giving a character a voice, and the purpose of this video is not to single out anyone specific, whether that's an actor, a sound director, or any localizer. This isn't about picking a winner or a loser. My job is never to try and tell anyone that they're wrong for liking a certain version of a character more. It's simply to acknowledge the possible differences. Also, this video will contain spoilers for Nier Automata, just as a heads up. So now that we have established that, let's get to it. In both languages, Chubi is undeniably serious, soft-spoken, and a big contrast to 9S. But if you've finished Automata, you know that deep down, Tubi isn't as cold as you may initially think. Throughout the game, we see that she is indeed very capable of feeling things when she is put in harrowing situations. There is no difference there between the dubbed version and the original. Of course, as far as wording goes, it is a Japanese script being transformed to be comprehensible to an English-speaking audience, and therefore, some changes are necessary. But for the most part, it is relatively similar. I've certainly come across worse offenders, if I put it that way. But although there isn't an inconsistency around every corner, there are a couple of them sprinkled throughout. And there's one example from fairly early into the game that actually shows off the difference in character very clearly. Already during the fight with Simone, 2B and 9S are attacked by androids that have been turned into weapons. Obviously taken aback by this, Tubi clarifies that they are indeed being attacked by android corpses that have been turned into weapons, with a certain distaste in her voice. While in English, the line is approached with a more lenient and sarcastic tone, where it's as if Tubi just loathes being attacked by androids. I'll play the clips right here so that you guys can hear it for yourselves. <laughs> Are we seriously being attacked with dead androids? Wait, I don't think... Tubi? So in one instance, Tubi is apprehensive, while in the other she is more sassy and dismissive. This shift is even more obvious during certain conversations between Tubi and 9S where in English, she comes off as more coarse, while she simply gently dismisses him in Japanese. One clear example of this is another scene at the amusement park, where 9S suggests that 2B refer to him by his nickname Nines, saying how the people that know him well do it, and so she should feel comfortable doing so as well. I mean, if you want to call me Nines, it's totally okay. I'm good. Oh, um, all right. English Chubi shoots this suggestion down with, I'm good. Japanese Chubi obviously doesn't agree to calling him nines either, but she responds along the lines of, not as of right now, implying that she may be comfortable with using the nickname in the future. But to cut the localization team some slack, Automata does have certain scenes that are rather difficult to translate. There is a third example of this difference in personality, but it's tied to a scene which is difficult to localize in general. In the prologue chapter, 9S keeps referring to 2B as ma'am. In Japanese, however, he is simply adding the suffix san to her name, as he wants to be polite and not simply call her name 
everything without using any honorific. This is a cultural clash, of course, as the importance of honorifics isn't something that is easily translated to an English-speaking audience. Even though someone may have limited knowledge on Japanese honorifics, the importance of using a polite form of speech is more complex. It's a matter of respect that just doesn't translate to English because of a difference in language and customs. So it's not really the same as calling someone ma'am, but that's probably the closest they could have gotten. But the important part is that Tubi plainly tells 9S that he doesn't have to add san to her name when speaking to her, saying that there is no need for honorifics. Of course, if you've finished the game, you know why Tubi feels this way, and the fact that she insists on the more intimate choice in this situation is a piece of foreshadowing to her emotional side. This is unfortunately also lost in English, because in the comparison to the more commanding stop calling me ma'am that the localized version of the scene has, Tubi comes across as more timid and lenient with Ninas. That being said, Tubi expresses her frustration very similarly between both versions. Her more openly emotional moments is where I would say that the characters most clearly overlap. Which is almost confusing, because it feels like the opposite is so much more common. So although the difference in character could arguably be pretty hard to pick up on, I think it's definitely there. Which of course leads to the bigger question. What could be the reason behind this? Unfortunately, and obviously, I don't know. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, and all I'm really here to do is hypothesize. First things first, a big part of 2B's character originally is the fact that she hits a lot of those classic kudere notes. These types of characters in Japanese media often come off as cold, emotionless, and soft-spoken. They carry themselves in a very calm and apathetic manner and rarely display any emotion unless fiercely provoked. She is focused on her goal, and fulfilling her orders is her top priority. But otherwise, she is generally indifferent to everything else. Fitting her in some weird character niche isn't what's important here, but rather the foundation that her character is built on. Although anyone who is familiar with Japanese media surely knows of this trope, even though they might not have known that there was an actual term for it, this same kind of character stereotype doesn't widely exist in popular Western media. Because they're very different from a classic kinda tough-as-nails character or someone who is generally quiet but still has bite. Because Tubi isn't a hard ass or particularly rugged. She is goal-oriented and serious, yet very indifferent to her surroundings. Which isn't commonly seen in a lot of characters written in the West, and therefore they can be hard to adapt. I am not saying that serious characters don't exist outside of Japan. I'm not crazy. <laughs> there are plenty of examples of characters from Western media that are deadpan, but it's often used to enhance their sense of coldness or their sarcastic tendencies. The appeal in these characters often stems from the sarcasm or toughness that seeps through their deadpan front. So the difference doesn't lie in the soft or monotone voice, but in the approach to other people and their surroundings. It's not a matter of being deadpan, but rather a matter of outwards apathy versus an otherwise coarse personality. For the record, I'm not necessarily calling these types of characters bad. I'm simply pointing out that they are the more prevalent types of deadpan characters characters that exist in popular Western media. This isn't implying that English Tubi is the devil herself and is without respect for anyone she comes across. She is still a very soft-spoken and calm character. I would probably consider her one of the closer examples of a dub attempting to translate and make this character type work. But at the end of the day, this is still a matter of two different cultures looking at the same character through different lenses. Certain personality traits and characteristics translate well and others don't. But I don't think this is strictly limited to being a matter of characterization. I think a certain amount of this dissonance can be attributed to a difference in language. Now, things are getting a bit complicated, but I'll try my best to keep it simple. The Japanese language has something called a pitch accent. This means that words are accentuated through a raise or drop in pitch. There are different types of pitch contours or intonation patterns in Japanese, which is what makes it sound like a steady stream. So what does that have to do with what we're talking about? It's important to mention because English is not a pitch accent language. Instead, it has something called language stress, or simply stress. Stress is when you accentuate words using length, 
volume, and pitch. Although it's surely not something that most people consciously do, syllables in English are often accentuated using all of these three, meaning that English naturally has a more dynamic rhythm to it in comparison to something like Japanese, where syllables are not accentuated through length or volume in common speech. A very simple example of this is the word banana. In the word banana, the second syllable is accentuated or stressed. How can you tell? Well, it is louder and longer than the first and third syllable. It's not banana, but banana. Japanese uses the same word as a loan word, but it is said in a pitch accent. So it's banana, with only a slight shift in pitch and not banana, which would be accentuating using volume and length as well. Ban. <laughs> Oh god, what am I doing? Obviously, I am skipping a bunch of details because I don't want to overwhelm anyone and I don't want this video to be a two hour long language class. My point being that the fact that English is naturally spoken with more stress makes it a less docile language than Japanese. This can lead to Japanese sounding more monotone to an untrained ear that is used to a stress language like English, which I believe plays a part in why people people may find that to be sounds more animated in English. That is not to give any less credit to Yui Ishikawa or imply that her or any other Japanese actor's job was somehow easier. She does not sound completely monotone or flat, but she did a fantastic job of portraying a stoic yet headstrong character. Anyway, I hope that didn't make anyone uncomfortably aware of their own speech patterns, but let's move on and wrap this up. I know that working in translation isn't an easy job. It's definitely an area where we should all try our best to be reasonable and understanding. More understanding of the people who work really hard in trying to bring titles from different parts of the world over to the West, and also more understanding of people's preferences, both the people that prefer dubbed media and the people who prefer the original, not because they think a localized version would be bad, but because they want to see what the creator's original vision was. Obviously, although differences will exist, they may seem more drastic than they really are when you focus in on them instead of looking at the bigger picture. At the end of the day, Nier Automata is still a fantastic game with loads of fantastic voice talents in it. I feel like this video ended up being more rambly than intended, but that's rather on brand for me, so... I can't really be mad. Regardless of what you decide to take away from all this, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.